You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at this ink. This is Confidence Blue from Monteverde, and this ink comes in a very nice 30 mil glass bottle, like all the rest of the Monteverde inks of this style. Uh, this is from the Emotions Collection. It comes with this little thing here. Talks about confidence and all this jazz, and here are the colors. There are 10 of them in the Emotions set, just like most of these other sets. They've got one for food, they've got one for the Noir collection, and uh, they all come in these like, nice flip-top boxes, or you can often get them as uh, singles. And these go for somewhere between 8 and 10 bucks per bottle for this 30 mil bottle, and that's going to vary depending on the set and where you get it and all that sort of thing. Uh, just... Uh, you know, wide distribution on these and so you have a, a bit of a, a price range but uh, eight or ten bucks for this nice bottle of ink no problem at all and it's a good bottle too I really like these I think the uh, this cap seal inside here works really well I've never had one of these leak on me uh, it's got a wide mouth so it's easy to fill pens It's deep enough to be able to fill pens pretty easily I uh, I've got nothing bad to say about these bottles they're cool so let's check out this ink Monteverde's Confidence Blue from the Emotions set is this color, which is not exactly what I was expecting. Like, it's kind of close to the to the label, but uh, it definitely looks more purpley in person than it does on the label. So uh, if you're looking at it going, oh, yeah, this would be great, because I, was, I was really into this color of blue, but this one's not quite doing it for me, and we'll talk a little bit about why here soon. So this is my usual Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper, and uh, the pen I had it in is this uh, Twisby. 580 ALR Prussian Blue that I've also picked up from John Ghouls at a different time. Uh, this is a really cool pen. I like this ridged grip. Uh, I like the look, and uh, it works really well with this ink, I think. It's got a medium nib. These Twisby nibs are pretty darn uh, medium as they go. So medium pen, uh, medium nib, medium flow on this ink. Lots of mediums going on. That's good and sort of baseline stuff. Uh, performance, it's not great on this crappy, crappy 20-pound, uh, 30% recycled copy paper from Staples, uh, but nothing is all that good on this 20-pound, 30% recycled, recycled copy paper from Staples. This is the cheap stuff your your job probably has in the copier room, and it's bad with ink. So, um, how does it do on here? I don't know. Pretty okay. It doesn't look bad. You get some spread here and there. Uh, well, you got spread most of the way. You have some feathers here and there, like this S and this T. You can see a few feathers on, and you get a bit of bleed through. It's not that bad. It's pretty much the same as everything else I test on this paper, which is to say, you get some bleed. It's nothing crazy. Uh, it's not. It's not going to ruin your page or anything. But it doesn't look great. It looks fine. Okay. So, uh, and then qualities. Uh, the good, best quality of this ink is that it has some nice shading and some good flow. Uh, all these Monteverde inks tend to have good flow to them. They've got this ITF technology thing that they tout. Let's see. Does it actually say on here what ITF stands for? Um... Nope, it actually doesn't say anything about that on here. Anyway, all of their inks have that stuff, so I'd be shocked if it weren't in this confidence one too. Uh, but ITF, I don't know what exactly it is, but it means you have good flow for the ink usually. So, uh, my comments and thoughts on this ink are that it just falls a little bit short for me, and I can't exactly tell you why. There's no particular way in which this ink is bad or deficient. Uh, it's a perfectly good looking ink. It's a good blue. It flows well. It looks nice. It's got cool shading. It's a little on the purpley side, but a lot of people are going to be into that. I think for me, it's going to come down to the saturation, and this just is a little bit light for me, and a little bit on the purple side. We'll see a bunch more inks. This is very, very very close to and a couple of those are favorites of mine so man blue is one of those color families where there's so many options that you can uh have two inks that look very similar and love one and just not be really moved by the other i'm not really moved by this one although it is perfectly good uh down here i've actually already done the water drop test because um I, I did a version of this video and forgot to turn the sound recording on, so I've got no sound for it, so we're doing it over again. In any case, you can see here that there is not much water resistance here. You can still see where the lines were, and you can still sort of make out the text, but keep your errant cups of tea and uh, rainstorms away from this ink because it is not water resistant. All right, here is the chromatography for this ink, and I think it actually looks pretty cool. You've got a very light uh, sort of baseline here fading up, and this is pretty much one color. You get a little bit of like a a pinky purple sort of undercast here, but not much of one. It's mostly just this color. There's not really any separation. Just kind of, 
that's the color that it is. All right. Let's look at it on a couple of other papers, and then we'll get to some com some comparisons. Here it is in an uh, currently inked uh, Inky Fingers notebook. This is sugarcane paper, which is some of my favorite. And there you go. I think it actually looks really nice on this, uh, this sugarcane paper. Came off really well. Uh, you can definitely see a little bit of that purple cast, but, uh, you know, it looks pretty nice on here. This is maybe the best representation of this ink is on this sugarcane paper. Uh, and then here in this ink journal, which is Tomoe River, it is up here at the top. And I think it looks pretty good here, too. It really kind of pops on this page. You can see there's a lot of interesting colors in this page, but this blue kind of really pops off the page. I think it could pop a little bit harder, but it looks pretty good here, too. So here's one of my, one of my conundrums with this ink, and that is that I like the way it looks. Uh, I just i am not really blown away. I don't have anything bad to say about it other than eh, it's, eh, it's pretty good. Okay, let's look at it next to a bunch of other stuff. This is a Colodex card. You can get these from Well Appointed Desk or many other retailers. Uh, and so here it is. And it's a little bit darker here than it comes off in, uh, like, say, on, to, uh, on the Rhodia. Uh, which is not a huge shocker. This is a little bit more absorbent than the Rhodia for sure. You don't get as much shading here as you do here, for example. Okay. So here up first is Pelican Edelstein Sapphire, which is a little bit more purpley than the Confidence is, but in the same vein for sure. Just leans a little bit harder toward the purple there on the Sapphire. Then Noodler's Blue, which looks surprisingly like this one, although it is far more saturated, I believe. I haven't used Noodler's Blue in a long time. Um, it's been, I don't know, ages, probably probably uh, eight years or something since I've used this ink. I'm not even sure where my sample is, but it's a good-looking uh, good color. Uh, so yeah, it says I got this uh, from some Goulet ink drop in 2014, so a while ago. Uh, then we've got here Papier Plume's Cali Real, which is one of my very favorite Papier Plume inks from the New Orleans uh, collection, and it is very, very close to Mata Verde Confidence. It is just a touch darker. This is like one shade darker, and I'm like, yeah, give me that. Uh, so you can still get this from Papier Plume. Definitely a cool ink. And then, lastly, one of my very favorite blue inks, like favorites of all time, is this Birmingham Pinco, Birmingham Pinco Cathedral of Learning Panther Blue, which is this mouthful of a name. And they don't make this anymore, unfortunately. It is discontinued. Uh, maybe they'll bring it back with a new formulation. We'll see. But this ink is fantastic. And I think it's just like maybe two shades darker than Monteverde Confidence. So if you put a little more confidence in that confidence, you get this Cathedral of Learning Panther Blue. And then, whew! That is good. So uh, maybe I just ought to put this in a pen and let it like condense down and like let some of the water evaporate. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. I'll just load it up with this. But a lot of inks that I really like, like these two, are very, very close to confidence and uh, just not, you know, confidence just doesn't, doesn't quite get there for me. But this is going to be an ink that will probably be for a lot of you. It's slightly purple. It's slightly undersaturated. It has nice shading and uh, there's nothing else wrong with it. So check out Monteverde Emotions Confidence. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber so you can get other videos and, you know, tell YouTube that I am worth watching. Uh, hit that like button if you like it. Leave me a comment below telling me what you think about Monteverde Confidence or what your favorite blues are in this shade. And um, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.